the podium with Reverend John. Always enthusiastic and effervescent. I had my foot a while ago on the mic, making a short, right? So that when you put your foot on the power, you know what happens? Right. Right. No, I know that that's not, that's not a problem for Reverend John. So help me welcome Reverend John. Thank you, Assistant Minister, and good morning, friends. Happy Heroes Weekend. We're so, I'm so glad to see so many people out. A lot of people, I think, may be off for the weekend, and we know that where they are, God is. And I'm not putting my foot on the power. I am the power, and may I guess I'm got true. <laughs> Welcome, too, to those who join us on the World Wide Web, and Happy Heroes Day to Jamaicans all over the world. Welcome back, Anna, and welcome home. That's lovely to see you. Of the whole pantheon of heroes, my special hero. Can you imagine who that is? The right, excellent, Marcus Messiah Garvey. Let me quote him to begin my sharing with you this morning. A people without the knowledge of their past history, origin, and culture is like a tree without roots, unquote. And I look out at the trees that surround our beautiful Temple of Light, Center for Spiritual Living, and I know that those roots go deep, deep, deep into the soil of our beloved center. And I know that the person who had the vision, our beautiful Reverend Dr. Elmer Lumsden, and who planted the seeds of truth in this place, in this island, lived to see them grow and spread their branches to the heavens in a celebration of the truth that truly sets men free. And so Garvey, a man whose passion and purpose was to change the consciousness of people thereby leading them to the open-hearted acceptance of their fellow humans, regardless of color, race, or creed. And friends, I deeply believe that our mission as a spiritual movement is the same as Garvey's. It is the transformation of lives. That's the business we are in. When you get here, come here on a Sunday morning, I don't want you to think that you've just come to spend an hour to hear something inspirational or to think about something pleasant or to hear a joke from Reverend John. I want you to think that you are doing something that is truly heroic. You are transforming lives with your consciousness. One by one, person by person, couple by couple, class by class, meditation by meditation, prayer by prayer. Let us say, we are transforming lives to the honor and glory of God. Can we say that? We are transforming lives to the honor and glory of God. When Reverend Anne said earlier, you are a hero, and you are to have taken that into the silence. And I've titled my encouragement this morning, A Hero Lies in You. Mariah Carey, in her beautiful song, Hero, reminds us, and I quote, and then a hero comes along with the strength to carry on. And you cast your fears aside, and you know you can survive. And so when you feel like hope is gone, look inside you. Look inside you and be strong. And you'll finally see the truth that a hero lies in you. What a responsibility we have. Friends, yes, a hero lies in each one of us. We may not all be powerful orators capable of capturing the attention of others, and inspiring millions to reach for greatness. But we are all able, my friends, to draw on the inner power and guidance of God. The same inner power that propelled and inspired and lifted up Jesus the Christ is the same power that is imbued 
in each of us so that we can draw on it and utilize it to help make this country and indeed this world a place that works for everyone, not just for a few. When Jesus was asked about his healing power, he replied that he of himself did nothing. Rather, it was the Father within who worked through him. The Sufi mystics believe that there are two sources of power that we can tap. The first is a physical source located in our adrenal glands. This is the fight or flight system wired into us so that we can, it, that, that hardwired flight and fight response can, can make a mother pull a truck off a baby in a, in a car accident. Um, her emotional link to her little one in, at that moment triggers the release of adrenaline, which in turn increases the heart rate and blood pressure shifts her brain into super quick thinking and causes a massive release of sugar which fuels her muscles and allows her to do what seems to be impossible. The chemical-based source of power fires you up when you have deadlines to meet. God help you if you work for a boss who works like that. They leave everything until 5 o'clock when you're ready to go home and then they want a whole week's work done. You know those kind of bosses? I was one of them. <laughs> I know I've learned to spread it out, right, Reverend Anne, over the week. <laughs> that chemical-based source of power can enable you to outrun Usain Bolt to get the house tidy when your mother-in-law phones to say she's on her way over. But however you know, if you constantly call on your adrenal energy, what's going to happen to you? Certain burnout, so not do it. The second source of energy, my friends, is non-physical. It is the source that the beautiful Jesus called Father. Instead of depleting his personal energy, he discovered and taught that we can become channels for the limitless, inexhaustible divine energy with which we are all imbued. You tap into this omnipotent, which means all-powerful, energy simply by recognizing its presence within you. This is wonderful because there's no need for any sort of mystical invocation of God's power. It does not need to be asked for because it has already been given to you. You don't have to perform any rituals or do anything. It's already totally and completely available to you and all you need to do is to claim it. Let us claim it right here and now and affirm together, to declare, today I declare the freedom of my divine nature. Together, today I declare the freedom of my divine nature. Today I claim my divine inheritance. Today I claim my divine inheritance. And in Psalm 73 verse 26, the psalmist gives us one. God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. I love that. God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. New Thought author Joan Borisenko says of this God power, and I quote, Like the sun that rises in the east, it is renewed each day. It cannot run out, and you cannot burn out, unquote. She notes further that the most important factor in becoming a channel of divine energy, I found this so surprising, is humility. Humility. Just think about that for a moment. Whether we use it for healing like Jesus did, or to articulate a dream of a changed humanity like Martin Luther King Jr., or for social activism like Mahatma Gandhi and Marcus Mazaya Garvey, or to articulate a science of mind like Ernest Holmes, like Reverend Dr. Elmer Lumsden. However you use it, humility is at the core and the basis and the foundation of the greatness behind those people that have achieved heroic status. Heroism is never about celebrating your own accomplishments, or as we say in Jamaica, bigging up yourself. It is always about the liberation of others from physical or emotional or most importantly of all, mental slavery. 
So why is humility such an important aspect of your hero's journey? To be humble is to be teachable, to be willing to look at yourself and to learn from your mistakes and, and from your experiences. It may be defined then as the absence of pride, and pride in turn may be construed to mean an inflated opinion of oneself, if you prefer it, conceit. I often tell the story of an early lesson I received in humility when on my 10th birthday, I got a much wanted bicycle. Now one of the few things I could do better than my older brother Dennis was ride without holding the handlebars. And so I was showing off on him by whizzing up and down the driveway, no hand style. Not that he cared a hoot. He was sitting on the veranda doing what he loved to do, read. And on this particular occasion, he was reading the Bible to our blind grandmother. Well, as I got to the bottom of the driveway on Sandhurst Crescent, there was a pile of, of, of um, gravel and the bicycle skidded. And I ended up in a most inelegant heap. Thanking God... It was out of sight of the veranda, and grateful that my brother Dennis had not seen it, nor my grandmother heard, I thought. And as I headed into the house, dusting off my bruised dignity, grandma said dryly, eh -he, pride goeth before destruction, and a hearty spirit before a fall. <laughs> to which my brother intoned, Proverbs 16, verse 18. I could have killed the boy. I didn't know then that there is only one mind. But you will appreciate the irony of this because believe it or not, that was the very passage Dennis was reading to grandma as I was whizzing up and down the driveway. When we do what we call in Jamaica, when we do a somersault and land on our head, we, we kin a lick. A kin a lick. And learned a lesson. Pride goeth before destruction of your bicycle, and a haughtiness before you fall and lick the wall. Grandma, of course, was rightly pinpointing the transitory nature of personal power, especially when it is accomplished by the kind of conceit that leads us to the mistaken belief that we are better or more gifted than anyone else. In his Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew 5, verse 5, Jesus gives us this beatitude. Be attitude, which means the attitude of being. And I quote, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. End of that scripture. The master teacher, and indeed all of history's great heroes, healers and mystics, knew that they are not the source of power, but simply a channel for the power. It is therefore the be attitude, the attitude of being, of humility, that opens our consciousness to allow God's infinite power to flow unimpeded through us, thereby enriching our world in sometimes quite amazing and heroic ways. There's an old Russian fable that tells of an infamous robber who was a master of disguise. And he managed to elude the police for many years through his use of elaborate disguises. Well, one day it became known to him that the authorities had penetrated his current disguise, which was as a Russian Orthodox priest in flowing robes, you know, very elaborate. And they were closing in on him. So while fleeing, he came to a small rural inn late at night. And there he found a peasant who had had too much vodka to drink and was in a drunken stupor. He was quite beyond waking up. So the master robber quickly exchanged his priest's elaborate robes for the peasant's simple garb and continued his flight. In the morning, when the peasant awoke, he was puzzled to find himself wearing a priest's robes. He thought to himself, hmm, either I'm a peasant, and the fact that I'm wearing a priest's robes is a terrible, a terrible mistake I have somehow made, or I really am a priest, and the fact that I remember being a peasant is really only a bad dream. <laughs> I, I, I think I'll go to the church and try to read the holy books and then I will know whether I'm a priest or a peasant. So he entered the church, opened the Bible, and of course couldn't read a word. 
I know, he said. I really am a priest. And the fact that I can't read the holy books, well, neither can the other priests. They are just pretending. So I'll pretend to. Friends, the teaching known as science of mind eliminates the need for pretense and leads us to the recognition of our true nature, which is the divinity within. A divinity which is often obscured by the elaborate disguises created for us by egos intent on preventing us from opening our hearts and bearing our souls to reveal our authenticity and the truth about whom we are as the sons and daughters of the living God. As we seek to uncover the hero within, it is critical that we become aware of our true inner selves. Raymond Charles Barker, one of the first New Thought writers to whom I was exposed, explains it this way, and I quote, your consciousness, your thinking, feeling process of life, is what you are. Your consciousness is what you are. You did not create it, nor can you stop it. You are it. You are consciousness in operation. And so friends, your consciousness, your thinking, feeling process of life is really the truth about you. You did not create it, and you cannot stop it, because you are it. RCB goes on to explain, and I quote, by your channeling of power, you produce either a pleasant experience, which you call heaven, or an unpleasant experience, which you call hell. So you see, it is the power of thought operating through the same law of mind that produces success of heroic proportions or dismal failure that really just takes you straight to, into the depths of despair. The interesting thing I have found as a minister is that when people have pleasant experiences, they have no problem claiming credit for them. But when they create the unpleasant conditions that they come to me to pray about, they have a banker basket full of alibis and excuses, and it is usually somebody else's fault. You say, Reverend, you don't know what she do me. Reverend, you don't know how, what I, I gave everything to educate this man, and now I'm gone. All of that. But spiritual masters, my friends, know that you can only produce what you channel, what you direct. Indeed, you can only produce what you are. So if you're feeling less than a hero today, if you're feeling a sense of separation from your inner source of power, know that right now you can change that feeling of negation into positive power. Know that right now, the divine presence in you can channel and direct the greatness that you are into your outer world, be you peasant or priest. Let us affirm there is a divine presence in me which I am directing to produce great good in my world. I repeat it. There is a divine presence in me which I am directing to produce great good in my world. Together? There is a divine presence in me which I am directing to produce great good in my world. Most people automatically think of someone else when they think of heroes, yes? But your assignment, should you decide to undertake it this week, is to think about yourself as a hero. To remind yourself frequently that God's life is at the center of your being flowing out from you to the circumference of your world, your relationships, and your experiences. Remember that in the world of which you are the center, you and you alone are the thinker. And so I want you to sit with a piece of paper or your journal or diary this, this week, preferably today before you forget your assignment. And I want you to ask yourself this question. What would a perfect world look like to me? And just let your mind just, just wonder. What would a perfect world look like to me? And write your thoughts in your journal. 
Then assume the attitude of the humble hero, and having done so, accept it as the higher truth about you, and ask yourself this question, how can I contribute to making this world a reality? What can I do personally to make this world a reality? A lot of times, you know, as a people, we say, what is the government doing about it? What is the church doing about it? Um, sometimes people say to me, oh, no. That's what we, in Jamaica, when we mean you all, people say, what are you doing about so-and-so? I say, but you are part of the UNO. <laughs> UNO is a we. And we is we. So we have to think about, what can I do? What is my part, the part I am willing to play, however small, in making this the world that I envision for myself, for my children, and for future generations? This week also, set your intention to see the hero in everyone you meet, even if they are not evidencing this divine potential. Now, I know this can be at all order when you read or hear of news of so-called criminal activity. And this is why Jesus said, John 7, verse 24, quote, judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Righteous means right use of judgment. He was telling us not to be misled by the exterior facade of the human personality or by the behavior of others. For my friends, there is always that within each person that is greater than their misdeeds and stronger than their human frailties. There is always that within each person that is wiser than their foolish mistakes. And we have all made foolish mistakes. We need to move away from labeling people and things good or bad and begin to see even the person who has committed antisocial deeds which evidence a lack of moral or spiritual values as children of God who are ignorant of their own innate goodness and are therefore expressing themselves in ways that illustrate and that frustrate their God-given potential. This, you know, is perhaps the biggest lesson I have learned in the outreach program titled Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life, conducted by Reverend Michael Record and me in the prison here in Kingston. We are into our third year of this program, and the current cohort of 16 participants is our largest ever. Word has got around that this is a non-judgmental teaching ex learning experience with no strings attached, and it is changing participants' lives. And so every week, one more come. And those that can't get out because they haven't, the, the paper to release them from their cell block hasn't been signed are furious. They don't want to miss class. Eric Butterworth, another early New Thought hero, writes, and I quote, regardless of the sinfulness of man, the depravity, the sickness, the weakness, the despair, he can come to himself at any time and find healing because man is a spiritual being. There is no unforgivable sin. There is no incorrigible criminal. There is no incurable condition." Unquote. Butterworth cites the case of an ex-convict who in his rediscovered self chose to be known as Alva Romanes. He had gone astray early in life, living many years on this, the shady side of the law, and ended up serving a long stretch in the penitentiary. Like many of the participants in Reverend Michael and myself's program, he began to realize that there must be a better way. And after a long soul searching, Romanes made the discovery of his own divinity within him. Slowly, but surely, the prison doors of his mind opened until he stood face to face with the truth of his eternal self. Like many of the participants in our program who discover latent talents during their incarceration, Romanes put some of his feelings into poetry. And as Butterworth notes, I quote, it's not great poetry, but there are great ideas, unquote. And I want to share one of his poems written in the hopeless atmosphere of a cell block. I'm not the brood of the dust and sod 
nor a shuttled thread in the loom of fate, but the child divine of the living God with eternity for my life's estate. I'm not the sport of a cosmic night nor a thing of chance that has grown to man, but a deathless soul on my upward flight and my father's heir in his wondrous plan. As I weigh the suns on the rim of space, who can dare to doubt of my destiny? Who can fence my feet within time and place as I reach the worlds of infinity? I am man, the son of the one most high. I am man and one with the life divine. I am Lord of earth and of sea and sky. And behold, the powers of heaven are mine. I am man the chosen and man the free. And it matters not what I may have been, for I walk erect through eternity to the far off goal that is yet unseen. With unswerving faith in the coming day, I have turned my course from the things of time. And with Jesus, my brother, to point the way, I have found my place in the life sublime. And some would label that man a criminal. I wonder about him as I wonder about many of the inmates who have blessed Reverend Michael and me with their insight and creativity and love and joy. I wonder about this man who wrote that poem. Did his soul choose the prison experience in order for him to have this awakening to his spiritual magnificence? We can't say. But it did evolve there. I think could Paul have become the great Christian leader if he had not first been a great persecutor of Christians? Again, we don't know. But I do believe, friends, that all life truly prepares us for itself. There are no coincidences, and we are where we are right now on our life's journey, on our hero's quest for our own greatness, because life intends us to learn from where we are and to use it to the honor and glory of God. As some of you know, each participant in our prison program is given a complimentary copy of Ernest Holmes' book, This Thing Called You. It's a powerful tool for helping them to find their place. And it is now time to order books for the current cohort. You can particip participate in this powerful ministry by contributing a book or two or three, or four or five, at a cost of $2,000 each. And Reverend Anne will be happy to receive your checks in the book room, or if you are overseas, you can contribute through PayPal on our website, templeoflightcrs.org. End of that commercial. <laughs> Alvaro Romanes says, I have found my place. Have you found your place? That's something for you to think about as you take off the day tomorrow to celebrate the heroes of our past, the people upon whose shoulders we stand, and to contemplate what a perfect world would look like for you and what you can do to contribute to it. For you see, friends, your place, your right place, can't be a place geographically. It has to be an attitude of mind. Your place is a B attitude. The right place is a state of consciousness in which we know and know that we know our unity with God. A place where we know our own divinity. We are going to be working, working on deepening union with God next weekend at our spiritual retreat in Ocho Reyes. That is the theme of our weekend, deepening union with God. And oh, I wish to God you could all be there. But please hold us in your hearts and pray with us next weekend. In his magnum opus, The Science of Mind, Ernest Holmes writes, and I quote, there is hidden within the mind of man a divinity. There is incarnated in you and me that which is an incarnation of God. 
there is no revelation higher than the realization of the divinity within us. Let us affirm I am a spiritual being, a hero, whole and free. Can we say that? I am a spiritual being, a hero, whole and free. I am the master of my destiny. I am the master of my destiny. To your neighbor say, you are a spiritual being, a hero, whole and free. You are the master of your destiny. Happy Heroes Day. You are a spiritual being, a hero, whole and free. You are the master of your destiny. Happy Heroes Day. Namaste. <laughs> Each of you is a spiritual being, a hero, whole and free. You are the master of your destiny. Happy Heroes Day. I love you.